and Kimberly Santana versus Juan Asituno Garcia. Good morning to both of you. Morning. This, this matter is before the court on a scheduling conference, and that's where we attempt to uh, put in place various processes and dates so that the case would proceed in an orderly fashion. I'll go to the plaintiff first, as you are the plaintiff, and then Mr. Garcia, you'll have an opportunity to again respond as well. Ms. Santana, what issues do you believe to be in dispute in this case? Uh, you mean why do I feel I need to divorce? No. Why why are you what issues are you not able to come to an agreement on that you're fighting? Oh, I see. Um, I think so far we've been able to come to an agreement on everything. Okay. Mr. Garcia, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, well, what happens then is, of course, I don't want to put in place a scheduling order uh, because what would happen if I do that, then the case would get sent to mediation and there's a cost associated with that. You don't need to incur that cost if, you, if you're coming to an agreement on everything. So I think what it will do is, at this point, give you, uh, uh, we're, we're very early on in the process, we'll give you about you know, about 45 days to see if you can't come to agreement of all of the issues. And uh, then what happens is, uh, it, Ms. Santana, because you are the plaintiff, you're going to be required to prepare a judgment in this matter, a judgment, uniform child support order, and a uh, judgment information form. And uh, what happens, you can work on those. I don't know if you're working with a service such as michiganlegalhelp.org or another service like that. They have all that on their website. And you just put it in and state that you want to complete it, and they'll put you into the judgment uh, portion and the Uniform Child Support Order and the judgment information form. And if once you prepare those, you can submit those to the front of the court for their approval. And if they approve them, then submit them to Mr. Garcia. He approves them, signs them, and then we just have to wait till our time frame runs. And uh, for the most part, then that completes what you have to do other than the final hearing. And uh, so we'll give you about 45 days to do that, and only because we're early on in the process. And then we'll check back. We'll have a status conference, and we'll do that because... Otherwise, the case could get lost if we don't have another backup hearing. You can imagine with all the thousands of cases we have, they just, you know, yours would get missed if we didn't have a, a follow-up hearing. So uh, if you can work on that and go to the, get it to the front of the court, get it to Mr. Garcia, and once we have all those approvals, then we just wait the time frame, and then we can get the matter concluded. Do you have any questions, ma'am? I do. If I'm not looking for any uh, child support, would I still need or, or spousal okay. support, anything like that? Would I still need to do the judge? Yes, the, the judge a judgment act? is the final as the final order in there. We have to have that. Okay. Are you are you receiving, or as Mr. Garcia, either of you receiving any sort of public assistance on behalf of the child, no. Medicaid? Uh, food stamps, no. any other sort of assistance. Okay. No. And the reason I ask that is you could not, uh, you could not decline to have support payable if in fact there's public assistance involved. And that's one of the things the front of the court does when they get the judgment, they'll check to see if there's public assistance and that. So what happens is, uh, no, that's fine. If, if, if again, there's no public assistance, you can, uh, you know, you can set it at uh, zero. And uh, that that would be fine, but you still have to prepare the the orders and the uniform child support order, and just state that it's at it's set at zero amount. Okay. Any so, other questions? So, when you say prepare a judgment, is that something I I handwrite or is that a form? No, there's a form. There's a form okay. judgment. If you go, like I say, if you go to MichiganLegalHelp.org, or there's some other services, that's just the one that most people use and we're familiar with. So if you go to that, it's all on there and you, you go down through and check the appropriate boxes and, uh, okay. you know, and, uh, and at the end, at the time when it's done, then you'll, then you can print it out and then 
provide that to the uh, front of the court. When you do provide all that to the front of the court, keep a copy, okay? Because you you won't get it back. Though you'll just get a report, and then you won't have anything at the end for you know submit submit to Mr. Garcia or submit to the court at that point. So, okay. So <clears throat> once I submit it to front of the court, and I give a copy to Juan. Am I supposed to do anything after that? Nope. We just wait for the front of the court. It takes about two weeks, depending upon how busy they are. Maybe two and a half weeks for them to approve it. And then okay. Mr. Garcia, as long as you don't have to make any changes, and that's why we say submit it from the front of the court first, because if they object, you have to make a change, then submit it to Mr. Garcia. You don't want to submit it to him first. He gets a signature and then they say, you got to change this and then you got to send it back to him. It's just, it's easier that way. And then once we have the approval of the front of the court and Mr. Garcia, then we'll be at at a point where we could have the final hearing set up at that point. Okay. And uh, so anything else that you have, ma'am? Uh, no, I don't. Thank okay. you. Mr. Garcia, do you have any questions? No, you and stay. We're clear now. Okay. Great. Well, we'll let you go then. You have a good day. And uh, we'll, again, we'll have a follow up hearing in about 45 days. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank much. you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Gordon, please unmute. Molly, can you hear me? Molly, please unmute, Gordy. Molly. Are you connected to audio? Good morning to both of you. Morning. Court will note that this matter is before the court on a scheduling conference. A scheduling conference is whereby the uh, court puts in place various uh, dates and uh, processes so that the case would proceed in an orderly fashion. I'll ask uh, Ms. Hardy first. As she's the plaintiff, then I'll go to you, sir, after that. Ms. Hardy, what issues do you believe to be in dispute in this case? What are you um, arguing about? Well, it's not necessarily an argument. It's just it's just a matter of unhappiness and, and wanting okay. to right. No, I, I don't I don't need to get into the facts of the case. I'm just saying okay. are you arguing about custody, are you arguing about property? Okay. No. Okay. It's very Hardy, amicable. Is, okay. Mr. Hardy, is that correct? You're not arguing about anything? Yes, sir. There are no arguments. Yeah. Okay. Then what the court's going to do is I'm not going to put in place a scheduling order. That would normally be what we would do after today's hearing. The reason we don't aren't do that is because part of that scheduling is that we would set the matter for mediation. And there's a cost associated with that. If you're not arguing or disputing anything, then I don't want you to incur some costs that you don't need to. But uh, right. um, what's going to happen is, Miss Hardy, you're going to have to prepare a judgment of divorce, a uniform child support order, and a judgment information form. Okay. And I don't know if you're working with a service such as MichiganLegalHelp.org or someone else. Yeah. If you yeah. are, you can get on that site and they'll... You want to say, well, you you want to complete it, and it'll take you to the part where you go through the uh, the judgment and check the boxes that the stuff you need. And I think I've already go ahead. I think I've already done that. Okay, maybe. Well, I I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, what you're going to have to do is prepare that the judgment of divorce, the uniform child support order, and the judgment information form. Those three documents. You yep, then I have them here. You will submit those to the front of the court for their approval. When you submit them to the front of the court, keep copies because you will not get the copies back from the front of the court. You will simply get a report back. And the reason I say that is because if they approve everything and you don't have a copy, you'll have to go back into Michigan Legal Help. And it's very difficult once you have completed it to go back in and get copy. You, what you'd have to do is you'd have to open a new file and then redo everything. So make sure you keep copies. And then what happens if the front of the court approves 
uh, everything. It takes about two, two and a half weeks, unless they're extremely busy. I don't know what their schedule is now, but it takes about that time. If they approve everything, then you submit them to Mr. Hardy and he approves everything. Then at that point, then we'd be able to schedule the final hearing. Okay. Do you have any questions, ma'am? No, sir. Mr. Hardy, do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay. Well, we'll let you go. What we'll, we'll do is we'll reschedule this for a status conference in about, about 45 days. That gives you time to prepare the paperwork and uh, get your approvals, et cetera. Oh, you got it all? Okay. Yep. They just, just submit it to the front of the court then for their approval. And yep. uh, once you get that approval, then, uh, like I say, in that 45 days, we'll get you back in and uh, – we might be able to take care of uh, most everything at that time if if that's the case. Okay. okay. Ms. Hardy, do you have any questions? No, sir. Sir, do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. We'll let you go and uh, you have a good day. You too, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Ryan, please unmute. Clara, please unmute. The only other thing I have on my schedule is uh, yes, Benton. I have the plaintiff, uh, Amy Benton, is in my waiting room. I just wanted to check these two in first, and that's the same for you, Ryan. Okay. So this is for an FOC enforcement hearing. Yes. Yes. All right, so both of you call 969, leave a message, the enforcement officer will call you back. If necessary, you will join back after 10 a.m. or at 10 a.m. for a hearing, okay? Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yep, they, 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 don't, they don't read that notice either, do they? <laughs> yes. Um, I do not have defendant. Samuel Bennett is not in the waiting room. That's all right. We'll go ahead. Good morning, Miss Bennett. Good morning, Your Honor. How are you? Good, good. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take some testimony from you. So if you would, we'll have you raise your right hand. We'll have you sworn in, and then we'll proceed. Okay. Miss Bennett, do you have the uh, script that we provided you? I do. You can go through that now. However, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to state your address. Okay. Um, my spouse and I were married on January 22nd, 2013 in Battle Creek by a person duly authorized to perform marriages. I was a resident of the state of Michigan for at least 180 days and of Calhoun County for at least 10 days prior to filing the complaint for divorce. Now before the court, the allegations in the complaint were true when I filed it and are still true today. My spouse and I ceased living together as husband and wife on July 28th. 2023. There are two minor children born of this marriage, and I am not pregnant. There has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the bonds of the matrimony have been destroyed, and there remains no reasonable uh, likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. If the court were not to grant a judgment of divorce, I would not resume a marital relationship with my spouse. And the reason for the breakdown of the marriage is infidelity and abandonment. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. The court will, will find that the testimony does establish the statutory basis. There has been a showing there's been a breakdown of the marital relationship. The file does appear to be in order. We have uh, our time frame has run. And likewise, we do have front of the court approval in this matter. So the court will enter the final judgment of divorce, the UCSO in this matter. That will conclude your case, ma'am. You are divorced. Best of luck to you. I hope everything works out for you. And we'll Thank end you. this proceeding at 8.49 a.m. Court will note for the record that the defendant Good morning to home. everyone. Uh, Mr. James, in this matter, you're before the court charged with a civil contempt of court due to your failure to pay child support and or related expenses. Upon a first conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. If it's a second or subsequent offense, up to 90 days in jail. Do you understand the charges? Yes, sir. <clears throat> the court has uh, appointed Ms. Perkins to represent you in this matter. You had to have, have you had sufficient opportunity to speak to Ms. Perkins in preparation for these proceedings? Yes, sir, I have. Okay. And Ms. Perkins, are you ready to proceed? 
I am. Okay, Ms. Per Ms. Hester, you can proceed. Thank you. We're here on three docket states. The 1998 docket is involving um, Lisa Jones v. Robert James. There's a total obligation that needs to be paid every month at $53.50 a month. The last voluntary payment was February 7th, 2023. There's been nine show causes, three bench warrants, one contempt finding. I monitor compliance by the last seven months at $53.50 a month. $374.50 should have been paid. Nothing has been paid. The total arrears on this case is $608.11. The last sentencing was June 21st, 2023. Um, he was sentenced to 21 days and he purged out for $500. The 2014 case is Vicki Huntley versus Robert James. The total monthly obligation is $469.50 a month that needs to be paid. The last payment was January 17th, 2024. It did come in through an income withholding through General Fastener. The enforcement history is there's been seven show causes, three bench warrants, one contempt finding. I monitored compliance by the last seven months at $469.50 a month. He should have paid $3,286.50. He paid $967.72, leaving a shortfall of $2,318.78. The total arrears on this case is $7,026.79. The last sentencing was also June 21st, 2023. He was sentenced to 21 days and he purged out with $500. On the 2021 docket, it's Michelle Pope versus Mr. James. The total obligation on this um, docket is six hundred and thirty five dollars and fifty cents should be paid every month. The last amount paid was January seventeenth, twenty twenty four, in the amount of two hundred twenty three dollars and fifty three cents. There's been two show causes, three bench warrants, one contempt finding. Monitor compliance by the last seven months at six hundred thirty six hundred thirty five dollars and fifty cents a month. He should have paid four thousand four hundred forty eight dollars and fifty cents. He's paid two thousand three hundred twenty four dollars and seventy cents. The total arrears on this docket is $12,599.48. He was also sentenced on this June 21st, 2023 to 21 days, and he purged out with $500. Okay. Ms. Perkins, do you dispute or contest any of the statements made by Ms. Hester? No. Do you have any questions for Ms. Hester? I do have one clarification question with regard to the um, case, the 1998 case. You indicated that voluntary payment on February 7th, um, but you indicated he had made no payments. In the, last seven, in the last seven months. Okay. And how much was that payment for? Do you know? Um, February 7th. Oh, gosh. I did not. I did not write it down. Okay. Of 2023. Okay. So it was February 7th of 2023. Yep. Okay. Thank you. No other questions. Okay. Any uh, proofs, Ms. Perkins? Your Honor, my client had income withholding put in place. And so he thought that um, income withholding was paying all three of these child support cases. Two of them indicate in income withholding, but the third one does not. He is baffled by that because he thought that income withholding was in, in place going to every single case. Um, then, unfortunately, he um, went to jail at the end of December and he lost his job. So therefore right now he is not working. However, he's been out for um, just a couple of weeks, not even a couple of weeks at this point. And um, he's filed for unemployment already. He is, um, he's gonna be getting $250 a week for that. And he knows that uh, some money will go to child support from that. He also has applied to 98 jobs since he's been out. And he has six interviews scheduled for this week. He also plans on pay, uh, filing for his taxes soon and be able to make the payment with regard to child support with that tax money. Um, since he is doing all of this to try to get a job and get back on his feet and get income withholding back in place, we're asking that this case be adjourned so that he has that time to attend those interviews that he has. Hopefully uh, he will be 
getting employment from one of those interviews and get that income withholding back in place and be able to resume paying child support. He does want to get this behind him and uh, pay the arrears and, and get this uh, paid. So we're at that's what we're asking for today. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Huntley, I'll ask you, you'll have to unmute to respond. Uh, you see that they've asked for uh, an adjournment to allow him to proceed with his interviews and hopefully find a job. So what are your thoughts on that or anything else you'd like to tell me, ma'am? This is a repeated thing every six months. Michelle and I are the only two taking care of these children. We're responsible for going to work every day, making sure that our kids are taken care of. But I have to use my time off from work to do these court cases instead of spending it with my kids. So her and I are the only two being disciplined in this. Okay. Ms. Pope, is there anything you'd like to tell me? Um, I agree with what Vicki mentioned. Um, also, <clears throat> you know, we, <laughs> this is a repeated thing. Um, Robert went to jail the end of December. Um, he hadn't made a payment on his child support cases in months leading up to that. Um, so him using the being in jail is just a scapegoat. Also, um, his attorney mentioned something about tax. He plans on filing taxes. Um, I know Robert hasn't filed taxes in a few years, and he he's he's not going to be getting any money back from taxes because he can't claim dependence because he doesn't support his children six months or more out of the year. So. Um, I would just ask that you take that into consideration when um, making your decision. That okay. okay. Mr. James, when was the uh, last time you had a full-time job? Uh, December of last year, sir, before I went to jail. Okay. And I'd worked there. And before that, I'd worked full-time from, I mean, I've always worked. It was just the income withholdings were never situated or in place, right? Well, what is, what does that mean? Well, I guess I don't understand when they're sent to my employer, my employer doesn't take them out right away. And then the next thing I know, there's a show cause hearing for the income withholding not being in place. I talked to my HR representative when I first started at General Fasters, and she reassured me that the income withholding was in place. And clearly it wasn't because they didn't start taking it out until December of you know, two months later. Um, as far as as far as not paying or not supporting my kids, I've always tried to support. There's always something that's there's. It seems like there's always been a hiccup, but uh, I have nothing holding me back. After I got out of jail this time, sir, um, I spent 30 days and I have no probation. I have nothing else to pay other than child support. Okay. Like I said, I've got I've applied for 98 jobs in a week. Um, I've got. Uh, like seven interviews lined up in the next week or so finding a job isn't hard I just uh now that i'm now that i'm out of trouble i won't have a problem keeping it okay i've been doing this for almost 10 years and it's always been an issue of keeping it okay thank you and when the interviews come he's gonna say that he went to the interview and they ran a background check and they saw that he had felonies and that he they didn't hire him because of that. And he's going to ask for six months more to try and find a job. OK, that's clearly not the case, Your Honor, because I have been working every year since then. So that's clearly not the case. So obviously that statement is false. OK, because I've always had a job. Well, but you haven't always paid. And one of the things the court's concerned about is it's your obligation to pay and make sure that the employer does. So like you stated is, oh, yeah, you've notified them and they said that it's in place. Well, clearly, when you look at your paycheck stub, you'll find out, well, they're not taking it out. So the last time you said it took two months for them to do it, you could look at the darn paycheck stub and say, well, they're not taking out my child support. It doesn't take a genius to look at that and say, oh, geez, that must not be, even though they told me it's being withheld, it's not being withheld. And then in that case, it's your obligation to voluntarily pay. And you haven't done that. Okay. I would just ask your honor that you just give me a chance here and let me uh, get a job and, and just give me an adjournment for three months even. And I'll show you that I'm going to pay.
I don't even need six months. Okay. Ms. Perkins, is there anything else? It's... Nothing further. Thank you. Okay. Well, in this particular matter, of course, heard the uh, testimony and the testimony shows that, uh, again, Mr. Uh, James has made some payments in this matter. So it's not that he has not paid anything, but uh, again, he has not complied with the orders in this matter that he has been working full time as he testified to and thought, as he said, he thought that he was paying through income withholding. But clearly, if he looked at his paycheck stub or if he saw, he realized that he was not paying, uh, again, the uh, the amount that uh, was required to be paid. They were not taking out any of the money, really, during this particular period of time. So the court uh, basically find that uh, he's failed or refused to comply with the orders of the court in this matter, and therefore he is in contempt of court. Anything before sentencing, Ms. Perkins? No, Your Honor. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do in this matter is, uh, Mr. James, as I could send you up to 90 days, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is uh, sentence you up to 45 days with credit for no time served. On the uh, 2098 case, I'm going to set a purge amount of uh, $200. The other two cases, a purge amount of $500. What I'm going to do is I'm going to suspend the... Uh, sentence for about 60 days that gives you 60 days to acquire employment begin paying and at that time if at the 60 days if you're not paying at that particular point then you've got to serve the uh, jail time okay if, if you if you are working and you are paying then the court will review it at that particular time and determine whether we continue the suspension or whether we have you go to jail at that time. Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, Ms. Huntley, Ms. Pope, thank you for coming in. And uh, all we're going to do is we, we want to obviously get the money for you so that your children can be supported. And hopefully this doesn't. If not, Mr. James will end up spending uh, some time in jail. Yeah, Ms. Hester. So when are the purge amounts due, Your Honor? And within sixty days? Yeah, we'll have we'll have a do within sixty days. Okay. 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 You're free to go. Have a good day. Hello. Thank you. Good morning to uh, both of you, Mr. Kelly. In this matter, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to pay child support and or related expenses upon a first conviction. You could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. If it's a second or subsequent offense, up to 90 days in jail. Do you understand the charges? Yes, Your Honor. Court has appointed Ms. Perkins to represent you. I know you spoke to Ms. Perkins. Have you had sufficient opportunity to prepare for this matter? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Perkins, are you ready to proceed? Yes, I am. Okay. Involving Jade Haggerty versus Brandon Kelly. The total the total monthly obligation for this case is $1,035.50 a month. The last payment was paid was yesterday, um, February 6, 2024, in the amount of $1,100. There's been three show causes, zero bench warrants, two contempt findings. I monitor compliance by the last three months at $1,035 a month, and he should have paid $3,105. He also agreed and was ordered to make three lump sum payments in the amount of um, $2,200 that was due November 17th, $1,400 that was due December 1st, $2,070 was due December 31st. So that equals $5,670 in lump sum payments which brought the total to $8,775. Um, with the $1,100 that was paid yesterday, the total shortfall is $7,675. Um, the total arrears on this case is $7,653.20. The last sentencing was June 21st, 2023. You sentenced him to 21 days, um, and he purged out with $500. Okay. Ms. Perkins, do you uh, dispute or contest any of the statements made by Ms. Uh, Hester? No. Do you have any questions for Ms. Hester? No. 
Any proofs, uh, Ms. Perkins? Your Honor, my client is self-employed. Uh, he does uh, remodeling um, as a licensed builder, and uh, during the holiday season is when his business slows way down, and um, that is what happened with him. This last year, he's been through a lot. He's had a divorce. Uh, he newly got sober. Um, he is trying to deal with this child support. He had... He had one employee that uh, left him in September. His roommate also moved out. Um, he's been having a hard time um, keeping up with uh, with life and paying uh, everything that he needs to pay. And he didn't have a vehicle. Uh, right now he is sharing a vehicle and things are looking better. You know, um, this is now a busy time for him. He is uh, getting more work. Um, he is uh, able to turn things around and uh, he will be able to pay another uh, $1,100 this month. Um, his goal is to get um, these payments down so he can no longer be behind. Um, he is doing everything he can to, you know, dig himself out of this hole. Um, being self-employed, you know, income comes in and goes out. It's kind of, you know, kind of rough. And then he went through a patch where they're really, really slow during the holidays. But now is the chance for him to um, make significant more money and start paying down on these things and so what we're asking for is an adjournment to allow him that time to get the business um, going again to be able to make another payment by the end of this feb end of february his goal is to continue with payments um in at least the monthly amount if not more um he's going to be putting everything extra that he can towards it to pay down these arrears and we're asking for him to be given that opportunity he did make that payment yesterday he is um very concerned about this he does not want to keep these arrears in and he's serious and i think that payment does indicate that he's serious and he needs the time to show that he can do this okay thank you mr kelly uh uh, your attorney has mentioned all these things about, uh, you know, that uh, your business is picking up now. You're working a lot. Uh, how is uh, how, how does this court have any confidence that in the next month or so that it's going to be different than the last month or so? Um, I would say historically over the 12 years of this case, this has been sort of a pattern where I'll fall behind due to uh, work or other things, and then I'm able to catch up in lump sums and then generally continue at the uh, monthly uh, rate. Um, I also would like to uh, have this cleared so I'm not spending the court's time, uh, the plaintiff's time, my time here. Um, I do not wish to go to jail for this um but like the uh defender explained it's been just uh cascading events um uh through the fall basically holding my breath uh deciding uh what can be paid to avoid homelessness or incarceration uh but historically also this is the next 10 months until uh, thanksgiving is our busiest time of the year um which you know, in the past has allowed me to catch up. Uh, but as she explained, the last year was sort of an anomaly in my life. Uh, but I'm not having any more children. We're getting married again. So I don't expect uh, these disruptions uh, it, again. Um, and as she said, my goal is to uh, be free of this debt and move forward uh, with life. <laughs> Okay, you said you're being getting married again. No, I'm not getting married again. Not Sorry. getting married. Okay, I thought you said you were. What's your What's your education background, sir? Well, high school and some college. So do you have access, you said you have, uh, you don't have a vehicle, but you had some access to a vehicle. I, I just wonder how you're able to carry out your uh, job without a vehicle. Correct. I am uh, being sort of loaned a vehicle 
um, and sharing it with somebody else as they need it. I have it a majority of the time. I recently started two employees after the holidays. Um, so I am able to get to work on a daily basis and the employees have their own vehicles as well. Um, if there's a pinch, um, I can ride with an employee. Um, my plan is to pay this debt down uh, prior to purchasing a vehicle, which will require uh, down payment, monthly payments, et cetera. Uh, so that is why I've stayed without a vehicle, uh, simply because I have this and I can't afford it. Okay. Ms. Haggerty, is there anything you'd like to tell me? Um, uh, I'm just at a loss, Your Honor. I, I, I'm at a loss. I mean, this, this has been going on far longer than just the enforcement and it's been going on um, when Brandon was in a very good financial spot. So that's where I have a hard time because uh, his children were never a priority when he was in a good financial way. So I feel, you know, on the one end that, you know, he's been awarded a lot of opportunity and a lot of time and he just hasn't learned the lesson. I mean, I, I can't understand why, you know, the last time he spoke to the enforcement officer, he made these promises to pay. Um, I, I don't think he is aware of the sacrifices that we make on a daily basis to get the kids what they need. We can't ask for an extension and a lump sum payment on our mortgage or our car payment or braces or college tuition or whatever it is that we're paying and um, the lights and the food and the, you know, the most basic needs of our kids being met. And sometimes that means taking a job that you don't want to take. And over the course of many, many years, I think he's been unwilling to do something um, or make sacrifices for his children um, to help financially. And he has not seen the kids in many years. And that is due to other personal choices that he's made. And, you know, um, that's a whole other conversation. I mean, he was also ordered a lump sum payment of $2,000 on May 9th of 2023 that never was paid. I mean, he's had orders and chances and agreements over the course of time. And it's very difficult for me because he is also the father of my children to want to see him in jail. And I am a sympathetic person, but I don't know what will hold him accountable because everything has just been a promise that's been broken. There's been no incentive made to make good on these promises. When he made the last lump sum agreement, I, I told the enforcement officer he will not pay this money. And um, I just don't know what will change. I mean, $1,100 doesn't mean much when he hasn't, I mean, he has not made a payment since 8 16 23. That was last time he paid. So again, you know, we can't, except for the payment he made yesterday. So we can't go six months at a time in regular life and not pay groceries and not pay bills and help support our kids. So I just don't think it's fair to ask that as the primary parent of the kids, and I know my son is no longer included in this of my daughter, you know, I've done this for many, many years and I just don't know what will change. I don't know what will change. We can't go months and months at a time and not see, and then $500 every, excuse me, six months or this or that. I mean, I would like him to make good on these payments, but and agreements. I just, I don't know when he will. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll have to find that out. Uh, any, anything else you have, Ms. Perkins? Nothing further. Thank you. Okay. Well, in this case, the courts heard the uh, testimony as well as the statement of Ms. Haggerty. Uh, again, it does have a record of uh, a long record of promises without uh, compliance as Ms. Hester had uh, documented the, uh, the respondent did uh, make basically statements and uh, stated that he was going to make very a uh, number of voluntary payments, which he didn't make in this uh, particular matter. And as I heard uh, what those were, I guess when I heard them, I questioned whether he was going to make those payments uh, because of the extent of what they are. And clearly he didn't. So he uh, stated that uh, things have slowed down, slowed up in his business, 
But notwithstanding that, he's not testified that he did anything other to try to find some other employment, try to find other full-time employment that would, uh, again, allow him to pay on a regular full-time basis. He's had some other personal issues that have impacted, uh, again, his life, but uh, everybody has those. And uh, Ms. Haggerty has stated that, uh, yeah, everybody has issues and uh, you still have to support the kids. And uh, again, to be able to, uh, again, keep the lights on, if you would, and pay all of those things, uh, she's not able to do that on the sporadic payments that Mr. Uh, Kelly is making in this uh, particular matter. The court will find that he has failed to exercise due diligence. He failed or refused to comply in this matter, and therefore he is in contempt of court. Anything, Ms. Uh, Perkins, before we uh, sentence? No, Your Honor. Well, sir, what the court could do is the court could sentence you up to 90 days in jail. I'm not going to do that. You had a prior 21-day uh, sentence back in uh, June of last year. The court would think that that would... Uh, motivate you to uh, again pay or to do something it doesn't seem to have had that impact in this in this particular case what uh, what the court is going to do is the court uh, is going to at this point is going to sentence you to 45 days in jail with credit for no time served the court would set in place a purge amount of one thousand dollars and i'm going to have that payable but I'm going to suspend the sentence for 60 days. I'm giving you additional 60 days to comply. In that 60 days, you have to pay your regular payments. And if you pay the purge amount of $1,000, then that would take care of it. If you don't, then you'll be back in the 60 days and the court will determine whether we continue a suspension of that time or whether you go to jail. So it's all up to you at this point. It's not like the last time when you made promises to Miss Hester and didn't keep them. Uh, at this particular point, uh, if you don't if you don't comply, you're going to jail. It's that simple. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And then Miss Hester will reschedule that for about 60 days out, and uh, we will then see you back at that particular time. Uh, Ms. Haggerty, thank you for showing up and, uh, again, making a statement in this matter. And uh, we'll close this matter at 11.01 uh, a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Ms. Snyder, in this matter, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to pay child support and or related expenses. Upon a first conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. If it's a second or subsequent offense, up to 90 days in jail. Do you understand the charges? Yes. Yeah. Court has appointed Ms. Perkins to represent you in this matter. Have you had sufficient opportunity to speak to Ms. Perkins in preparation for this hearing? Yes. And Ms. Perkins, are you ready to proceed? I am. The respondent, okay. Natasha Snyder, is here before the court before for a bench warrant hearing. Ms. Snyder is currently, currently ordered to pay $228 per month for current support, $50 towards arrears, $3.50 for service and processing fees for a total monthly obligation of $281.50. Last payment received on this docket was on December 22nd, 2023 in the amount of $5. And the last payment prior to that was on September 22nd, 2021 in the amount of $53.22 through unemployment. Ms. Snyder posted a $400 bond on November 23rd, 2023, and she a bench warrant hearing because she failed to appear for an adjourned show cause hearing. Oh, excuse me, because she failed to appear for an adjourned show cause compliance hearing before Judge Kirkham on September 27, 2023. This is her first show cause, second bench warrant, and measure compliance over the last six months. Ms. Snyder should have paid $1,689. She paid five, leaving her a shortfall of $1,684. The shortfall at the time of her last hearing was $1,689 for a total shortfall of $3,373. Total arrears on this docket are $2,746.82 through January 31st, 2024. 
And Ms. Snyder also was in Calhoun County Jail from November 18th until November 23rd. So that would give her credit for six days. Okay. Ms. Perkins, do you contest or dispute any statements made by Ms. Mouton? No. Do you have any questions for Ms. Mouton? No questions. Okay. Any proofs, Ms. Perkins? Your Honor, my client is ordered to pay $281.50 per month, which is quite high since she does not have a job. Uh, right now, she has a boyfriend that is supporting her, and with his job, they're struggling to make ends meet. Uh, in the past, when she's had some money, she has given it directly uh, to the kids, and we have discussed that, that she cannot do that because child support does not know that uh, money is going directly to the kids, so she knows not to do that in the future. However, she, she was doing that um, whenever she could. She is having troubles finding a job because um, she's had times when she was um, kicked out of homes and her ID was lost and she had to try to find the money to get another ID so she can get another job, can't get a job without an ID. And she also has problems because her boyfriend has the car and he is the one working. So she has no access to a car while he is at work, which also prevents her from finding work. Um, she wants to get the child support modified to a, a lesser amount since she is no longer not working right now so that it'd be more manageable and what we're asking for is an adjournment so that she can have that time to do that modification to get it down to something that's a little bit more manageable for her and her her boyfriend to um, be able to pay he is supporting her right now and um, give her that time to try to get her license squared away so that she can try to find a job and um, she now knows not to give any money directly to uh, the other party in this matter. So we're asking for that time for her to be able to accomplish these things. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Snyder, in this matter, uh, your attorney has stated that you do not have a job. What have you done in the last year to acquire employment? Um, <clears throat> uh, last year, really, I was just like, I ended up going to jail, um, the end of 22, and then I got out last year, which would have been, um, January 23, and I was like, let's, let's stick. My question was, and what have you done in the last year? And you've stated that you got out of jail and. January of okay, yeah. and I'm, What I was saying was that I've been homeless for past like half of the past year. Um, struggling. I mean, I haven't really. I don't have no identification. I mean, been like hard. So. Okay. Well, again, it's got my question was to... my question was what have you done in the last year? So I guess from your answer, you have not done anything in the last year to acquire employment. Is that correct? Um, I guess you can put it like that. Besides seeking employment that I can't get, yeah. What's your education background, ma'am? I dropped out in ninth grade. In have Ohio. You looked, have you looked at... Uh, Again, completing your GED? No. Okay. Why have you not looked into doing that? How long have you been out of school? Um, it's been a while. Um, last time I was taking classes for my GED was when I was living in Ohio. Um, and I was pregnant, walking to classes and stuff, and then I, I never finished the class. So... Okay, so taking the test. Okay. <clears throat> Have you done anything else to prepare yourself for employment uh, as far as go to any programs that uh, uh, provide you with some educational uh, assistance or any sort of uh, occupational assistance or anything that might help you to acquire employment? Have you done that? Um, besides recently, uh, ordering another ID, I mean, there's nothing I can't, I can't get a job without that right now. There's like no question. Okay. Nobody's going to hire me without ID. 
That's what's stopping me. That's my main thing right Okay. Now. When when did you lose your ID? Um, I haven't had ID in a long time. I ordered it three times last year. Within okay. the last the end my of the last year. My question was not what you ordered or anything. When was the last time? When did you lose your ID? Over a year ago. Yeah, okay. Like and in the last year, what have you done to acquire that? I paid for it several times. Okay. If you paid for it, then why didn't you get it? Because the address that I got delivered to, one of them, the first time I ordered it, I was working with one, and I ended up moving out of her house, and she got my ID, and she threw it away. She never gave it to me. So then I ordered it two more times, and I never received it. So... That's something I have to take up with the social. I mean, with the secretary of state for them to help me somehow find out where my IDs are going. Okay. <clears throat> have you? When was the last time you had uh, full time employment? Um. And. Uh, a couple of years ago. And what was that full-time employment in? What type, what field? Factory. I've always done factory work and um, hair. I do hair. Okay. I haven't done any of that in so long. So. And maybe you don't know or maybe you do know that out in uh, Fort Custer and the factories out there, uh, they have a labor shortage right now, and they're hiring. They're hiring every day. What's it called? Out in the in Fort Custer Industrial Park, all the companies that are out there have labor shortages, and they are hiring people every day. Uh, have you looked into employment with those companies? Okay. I There's know that. Denzo, Hylex, Musashi, a number of other companies as well. Yeah, that's where my boyfriend works, Musashi. Okay. Have you looked into getting an employment with that company where so you could, you know, you could drive to work together? You said you had some issue with a car. Uh, yeah, he has the car, but um, I mean, yeah, that's something we can look into. So I just, I mean, I never put the application in or anything because I just figured, like, if I didn't have the ID, it wasn't going to do anything. But, I mean, I can put applications in and stuff. I mean. Okay. I'm trying to get all this figured out. I mean, the situation. So, I mean, I'm you know, trying doesn't, to better doesn't, doesn't appear that you're doing such a good job at figuring it out. Yeah, yeah well, my life ain't that easy either. I don't have it easy like everybody. Yeah. Anything else that you'd like to tell me? Um, I'm um, going to be uh, trying to accomplish getting uh, the ID thing figured out. Um, I want to go I mean, have a chance to go down and get this modification going and possibly seek employment. Okay. Your Honor. Anything Anything else, Ms. Perkins? No, Your Honor. Okay. Well, in this case, the court's heard the uh, testimony of Ms. Snyder and uh, as well as uh, Ms. Mouton in this particular matter that uh, the uh, respondent has a substantial arrearage of approximately $3,000 that uh, she has in, the, well, basically she... Uh, paid $5 back in uh, December of 2023. And prior to that, she hadn't paid in over two years in this uh, particular matter, uh, notwithstanding that it's a pretty reasonable, pretty minimal uh, support obligation of $281.50 per month that she has uh, that testified as to some difficulty she's had as far as uh, housing. Uh, her education background, but quite frankly, when the court hears a testimony, she's not done anything to improve that. She has uh, stated that she's not put in applications. She stated now uh, that's maybe something that she should do, 
uh, maybe look at even the same place that her boyfriend is working so they wouldn't have a problem with the car. She hasn't done that, however. She has a, stated as to the problem with her ID, but it, and she apparently uh, ordered that a number of times but hasn't gotten it. Uh, but uh, that is uh, something that she needs to get resolved so she can work, but she doesn't appear that she's been too diligent on uh, getting that accomplished in this matter either. Uh, it's been the years since she uh, had full-time employment. She obviously was able to handle factory employment. Uh, in this particular area, there is a uh, substantial demand for uh, labor in the uh, factory field at any number of places, and uh, she has not taken advantage of that. Of course, find that she has failed to exercise due diligence, failed or refused to comply with the orders in this particular matter, notwithstanding the fact that she was well aware of those particular orders and uh, just simply has not, uh, has not complied. Uh, so the court will find her to be in contempt of court. Anything before sentencing, Ms. Perkins? No, Your Honor. Well, she has not had priors. The court could sentence her up to 45 days in jail. The court is not going to uh, sentence her to that substantial amount being a first time. What the court will do is sentence her to 21 days in jail with credit for six days served. The court would order that she pay uh, a purge amount of $500. Uh, that way she can purge herself of contempt. The court will order that uh, she has until uh, 4 o'clock p.m. on February 16, 2024. Ma'am, if you do not pay the purge amount by that time, you are to report to the sheriff's department and to serve the balance of your sentence. That will be the order of the court. Your Honor. Yes. Can we forfeit the $400 bond that she posted? Yes, we can forfeit the uh, bond. I've, I made note of that, and I forgot to mention that. Thank you. Okay. So, ma'am, uh, you're going to have to pay the $500 by that date or, or uh, by the uh, 16th of uh, February or show up to the jail. If you don't, then the, uh, the sheriff at that point will come looking for you and it may result in more jail time. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Court one, this matter at 11, 18 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you.